Hey guys, so today I'm really excited because I am doing a suit of armor that I've wanted to do for a very long time. I'm doing the Mando armor! I'm only like two seasons late to the party, but better late than never. The reason I haven't attempted this armor yet is because it is very intimidating, especially since it's so asymmetrical, so I was dreading the patterning part. But the shapes are pretty basic and I just wanted to tackle it. So all day yesterday I started making the pattern and I'll show you what I have so far. So this is what I have so far for the patterns. Hi, Angel. I have the chest plate, a layer under the chest plate, another layer under the chest plate. The shoulder armor, I'm gonna use this one for the actual pattern that I make. Um, but I wanted to keep the symbol from that. And then I have the crossbody belt. I have both arm pieces. These are the toppers. They're individual because they're different from each other. All the belt details, the gun holster, hip pad, both thigh pieces, the shin piece for both legs. Of course, this um, armor is all asymmetrical except for maybe the chest plate. So it took a lot longer to make than I hoped for. I also have this little pouch detail. One of the pouches go here, another one of the pouches go there. One more pouch goes on the leg strap that will be all visible when I make these patterns digital. I have all the detail pieces of the costume except for the undersuit itself. So I think that should be incredibly helpful if you're making it yourself. In fact, I like to make things as simply as possible. So it's not only easy for me, but it's easy for like anyone who wants to do it themselves. Honestly, sometimes the way I make things, I feel like a kid could do it with adult supervision. But the patterning, always the hardest part. If you watch my Dune armor, you know that that was like the bane of my existence. But once the pattern is done, it's like smooth sailing from there. So if you want to save yourself the headache, I have the patterns available in the description. Not only does that like support my work, but hopefully it saves you hours of your life that you can spend just enjoying the costume process and not ripping out your hair. I think that's a good deal. But yeah, the link for the pattern is in the description, so go check it out. And now that the patterning's done, on to the fun part! Let's get started! I'm so excited! <laughs> Alright, let's go! First, I start by cutting out the pattern pieces onto poster board. I use these little squares I cut out to connect the seams on the underside by gluing them on. And then I cover the poster board with craft foam. Here you can see both shoulder pieces. I also cut out and glue on the little detail. I continue this process for every piece, and I use a pen to make small indentation lines. I also make sharp edges by adding hot glue on the inside of the foam and bending it. And for the edges that bend outward, I use a heat gun and fold the foam. Just keep it up until all the pieces are finished. Hey guys, it is uh, very late at night. I am sitting in just a massive mess of uh, foam and patterns and poster board and scissors and heat guns and glue guns and I'm exhausted. It's like almost 12 a.m. but I have a deadline and I have to finish this tomorrow. So I think I might have to skip sleep tonight, but that means I could at least stay up until the morning and then maybe start painting in the morning and let the paint dry so I could put on the second coat. As long as I don't sleep, everything should be fine. Except for my body, my body won't be fine. My body will be extremely tired. I am gonna shower though because I just feel filthy 
right now. And then I'm gonna get back to this, which it's actually looking pretty good. I made this arm piece. Those are like little skewers and uh, <laughs> toothpicks with beads on them. Um, they got all the detailing and stuff. I have the chest plate, shoulder pads, as you can see here. It has a little symbol on it, it looks so cute. The leg pieces, I still need to do the other arm. A bunch of details on the legs, a shins and ankles, the two belts and the patches, and then like the stomach pad thingy. That's the update. I'm going to shower, and then I'm going to finish the rest of the armor build. And then hopefully by sunrise, I can paint. All right, bye. Now back to crafting. To make this curved tube, I cut a paper towel roll in half. Then I cut it into the shape I wanted. And I cover it in craft foam. Then I start cutting out all the little detail pieces and putting them on wherever they are meant to go. And again, I use a pen to make indentations. I also use an X-Acto knife. Then I go over the cuts with a heat gun to make the lines more prominent. I also use the X-Acto knife and heat gun method on other parts of the armor as well. It works like a charm. He has a lot of these little tubes throughout his suit. To make these, I start with a foam dowel. Then I cut them into the various lengths I need and glue little strips of craft foam around the ends. For the buckle, I just cut a thicker piece of foam and fold a strip of foam around the edge and made little studs with hot glue. He has so many details, especially on his belt, so I just cut out the patterns and glue them together. He has three different pouches throughout his costume, so I made three foam pouches. Now that i finished making all the details for the belts, I can glue them all on. There isn't really a right or wrong way to do this, as long as the pieces go on generally where they're supposed to and stay put, it's gonna look good. I also attach the gun holster. Then I do the cross body belt and add all the details to that as well. And that's pretty much it for the crafting part. Hello, moral support. It is the second day, so two days not a big deal but a lot of work I I was like oh I'm gonna stay up all night and I'm gonna paint in the morning that didn't happen I showered I'm just gonna sit in bed for five minutes and charge my phone that didn't work at all I immediately fell asleep I was just out I did sleep through the night and I'm not tired now it's 12 a.m. the next day so that's cool and I'm not tired so I guess the sleep was a good thing but also, like, I thought I'd be done today with the costume, and I'm, like, 60% done. So, hold on, my dog needs water. Was that yummy? Good boy, you wanna come up? Wanna come up here? Come on. Yay. Um, so, I finished making all the armor pieces out of foam, so now all I have to do is paint them. Which painting is always my favorite part, so I'm very excited about that. But then I have to do all the fabric stuff, so I gotta make an undersuit. I'm gonna cut a lot of corners, not gonna lie, because I'm just not in the mood to work with fabric right now. I just wanna make armor. It's like 12 a.m. right now, so technically today, 
I'm going to be doing a photo shoot for this. Uh, so I need to paint like now because it needs to dry in a few hours. Um, because I have to do the photo shoot now. I have absolutely no other choice. So, fun. <laughs> so I'm going to show you what I've done so far. And then I will show you the painting process. Let's do this. So this is what I am working with right now. I have all these leg pieces. There was so many details and I'm not going to lie. I tried to make the patterns as simple as possible and still there are so many details on all these pieces. I'm really happy with how the gun holster turned out. Um, and then this belt looks really cool. I can't believe how good the foam dowels ended up looking and, um, both of the little arm pieces, they look really cool. They're very different from each other and very detailed. So that wasn't like my favorite thing to make. I definitely feel like I can breathe a little now that all of this is done. So now I'm gonna paint it. To start the painting process, I prep the armor with a couple coats of Plasti Dip. I shake the can up really good and apply thick coats. Once that's dry, I go over all the armor pieces with a coat of silver spray paint. Hi, um, I had to stop painting. <laughs> oh my God. I had to stop painting because it started raining. And since I'm spray painting, I have to paint outside, but obviously you can't paint outside in the rain because the paint needs to dry and then paint can't dry while there's water. While there's, who is it? It's no one, it's no one. It's rain. I brought it onto the porch so there's not rain like falling on it. Nugget, 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 don't step on it. Uh, uh, uh. Good boy, good boy, good boy, okay. I was scared for a second. Oh my gosh. Hey, dude, 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 dude. He's not used to all this stuff being on the floor. I mean, he's used to stuff being on the floor, but he's used to like it being just junk that I'm not really worried about because it's just scraps. But no, there's like painted pieces. So anyway, basically I'm trying to wait out the rain and hopefully I'm able to paint this today despite the moist air. So we'll see. And um, this is a back strap because after crouching on the floor, cutting all these pieces, my back hurts. Oh, the rain's getting harder. I can hear it now. So I'm gonna take a break, gonna eat some yogurt, and then I am going to see what's dry enough to hand paint. All right, I'll, uh, I'll check in in a bit. Oh, oh my gosh. I gotta clean up this mess. Look at all the scraps. So I'm going to start using some brown, black, and silver craft paint so I can add details to all the little pieces. And I'm gonna show you how I do that right now. For all the crevices and indentations of the silver armor, I add a light brush stroke of black paint. This helps it look a little more like metal and gives it more dimension and really makes the details pop. I continue this process on all of the armor pieces. I also obviously paint all the belts brown and the rest of it is pretty self-explanatory. Honestly, 
three days and a photo shoot. You know what? I'm not disappointed about it. There are definitely things I would change, but I'll get to that after I show you what I made. But also, I was so concerned about sleeping that I totally didn't even care how I stored the costume after the photo shoot. So it's a little bit disheveled, to say the least. It's fine because any crinkles and stuff I can get out with a heat gun. I made it so quickly that I would be more than happy to remake the parts because I do want to refinish it anyway because I'm not super happy with the paint job just because the rain and I was so rushed. So I just think I could do a way better job with the paint, um, especially to match the helmet, which I will get to the helmet. I know you're like, wait, you didn't show us how to make the helmet. <laughs> we'll get to that. So this is the belt piece. So when I'm making something out of foam and it needs to be firm, I stabilize the back of it with poster board. When I want something to be like a little bit flexible, I stabilize the back of the foam with fabric, hot glue some fabric to the back of the belt pieces and that will give them enough stability so they can't like rip. It's really nice to know that your buckles aren't gonna like rip off because they're fortified by fabric on the back of it. So I'm gonna try to get on camera so you can see this baby in action. There she is. All right, so this crossbody piece with all these cool details, it's attached to this hip belt. Here are the details on the side, and I also attach the hip pads to the belt itself because I like to do as little things as possible when getting ready and unready. I'm stressed. I just wanna get in my costume within five minutes. So the more pieces you have attached together, the quicker it is to put it on. You buckle it, it's on. And then for the back, um, I do have just a loop through here. So I can just buckle this put it through the loop, and then it's on, baby, it's so easy. And then at the end of the con, when you're tired, you just do, and it's off. But yeah, I didn't make a blaster, but I do have a harness, and the harness can work. So if you had like a gun, you can totally like stick it in there. If you want, you could put like a clip here, or Velcro or something, and that would open to make it easier to go in and out. I do have a pattern for everything you see in my hand that will make your life way easier. And then I have these awesome gauntlets. So usually I just make one pattern and then double it and then I have two, but I had to make two entirely different patterns for each of these. And if you see here, a good thing to do when you want something that looks like it's like lighting up is to use reflective tape. It's just something you can't achieve as easily if you were to just paint it. And also, if you don't wanna add LEDs, this is such a good option because it will look good in all photos, especially flash photos, it looks awesome. So when I made these, I made them fitted to my arm. But an alternative you could do, if you don't wanna attach it in the middle, you could add a strip of Velcro here, you could add some elastic straps here. For me, I can just slip my arms in them so they look awesome these are so easy to put on and off patterns for these in the description now we have the thigh pieces another asymmetrical design but these were super easy and you know the drill i have the pattern all i did to attach them is i secured some elastic straps on the back this is a patch of fabric. When you glue a strap on, glue a square piece of fabric over it to make sure it has something more to hold on to. And the way you put them on is we're just gonna slide it on anyway. Since it's elastic, you can just stretch it over your legs like that. And then it's on and it's so easy to put on. And then you don't need attachments on whatever suit you're wearing under it. But an option if you wanted to attach it to a suit would be to glue some Velcro on the back of this. Sew some Velcro to whatever pants you're wearing for your Mandalorian costume and then you just like slap them on. So to me it doesn't matter but I know if you're like a stickler for like accurate looks there are definitely tons of other options but, but that's how I did it. Okay, this piece is kind of a mess. I am fully aware that is not ideal. So this is the chest piece. And I say it's not ideal because the attachments I use to put everything together, what is just a bunch of like strings and straps. I just wanted it to stay on my body at that point. I didn't get to like think it through. This is the little underplate. I will show you how I put this on. First, I just take this piece and I clip it with a buckle in the back. And then I take this piece, I go under this piece, I put my arm through here, just over my head, 
Other arm through this side. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> and then I have a buckle here, buckles like that. And then these guys um, are totally just flopping around, but I could easily add a strap to the bottom of it. I could add Velcro to my suit. There are so many things I could do to stabilize it. Like I said, I just wanted to get this thing on my body at this point. But you know, I walk so you can run. So you just take all of my mistakes and knock me out of the water. I am not a competitive person. You already won, like I give up. But yeah, I just kind of have to like wiggle my way out of this and then lose this piece. And then again, so easy to take off quickly. And some of the last pieces I made out of foam were all the details for the legs. There's like a strap that goes around the ankle. I think this goes around one of the knees. Um, this is a leg strap. It has a little pouch on it. So all the pieces you just saw went on one leg and this goes on the other leg and it just velcros on. All of it velcros on. I just, you know, easy peasy. So those are all of the armor pieces that I made. And for the piece that I definitely did not make um, is this helmet. It's a little expensive, but it's actually not crazy expensive for what you are getting, which is a beautiful collectible prop. I got it on Amazon. I will add a link to it in the description in case you want it. I don't know if there's any available. Oh my God, just look at it. It is so, so nice. The inside is awesome. It has so many details and stuff inside as well. It actually does have attachments with like a light on the side that you can put um, and it just sits on your head. I love this thing so much. So no, I absolutely did not make the helmet, but why would I when this gorgeous thing exists? And I don't regret it at all. And another thing that I think is a very useful prop is Grogu. This one actually rolls around. He has little wheels and he kind of like wobbles and walks around the floor. He's an amazing size. And he also moves and makes cute little noises. And he has a little remote here. <gasps> Isn't he cute? Let me see if I can show you him walking. He's also like remote control, so you can like move him around. But yeah, if you want this, I will add a link to it in the description because he's so cute. I have these gloves. I took a pair of black gloves and put them over brown gloves. And then I just glued on the little hand guards. And then I didn't make boots. I actually found these awesome boots at the thrift shop. For the undersuit, I just did a dark brown pair of pants. And then I have a matching dark brown turtleneck that I put on and then I just layered this shirt right over that to just add some more dimension to the fabric pieces. I didn't sew anything. Now for the cape, I actually had some scrap fabric just lying around and I cut the bottom of it all jaggedy looking so it looks like what it did in Mandalorian. But yeah, that is my three day Mandalorian armor build. You wanna be Mandalorian for an event? You can. No excuses now, you just have to do it. Sorry, I don't make the rules. I just barely follow them. All right guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I had so much fun making this and I hope if you've been wanting to make this costume, now you have the confidence to do it because if I can do it, you can definitely do it. The patterns will make your life a lot easier and I will add the link to them in the description so you do not have to suffer through making those. I have tons of other cosplay costume and makeup tutorials on my channel, so feel free to go check those out. And thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye! I'm never doing that again.